Hey, Steve, uh, overall question on the flings here. If yeah. you've got any insight as to the ones that VMware GSS is familiar with and they're willing to at least do basic troubleshooting on, um, any information like that would be helpful. Yeah, uh, and I, I probably should have started off with kind of an intro as far as what, what are VMware flings in the first place, right? So if you're not familiar with VMware flings, if you just go to flings.vmware.com, you can find a list of all of them. We've got 131 today. Um, and basically what they are is they're, they're projects, right? Little, little projects and apps and tools that we've built, um, but they're not officially productized, which means we don't officially support them, right? But a lot of times they do become productized. So like, for instance, the vSphere HTML5 web client is a great example, right? It was a fling that you could use and not use the Flash client. And then that eventually got rolled into the product and now it's, it's basically our only client going forward, right, for vSphere. So um, I can't speak to, you know, which of these flings GSS is at least familiar with as far as supporting. Uh, I, I don't think you'll ever get anyone to say it's, you know, it's going to be supported by GSS, like just because it's a well-known fling. It's, they're still going to say it's not supported, but yeah. you know, they may be familiar I've with it. I've had GSS actually tell me the Windows optimizer is not even supported, yet internally we encourage people to use it. Mm. So anyway, that's a little bit of background on flings themselves, um, and these are completely public-facing. They're, they're very helpful, a lot of them, I feel like, so check those out. Um, oh, also, uh, yeah, Dean put a good comment in the chat here. It, it's worth calling out that feedback for flings will help it become productized. So if you have one here that you find is very helpful, um, provide feedback, right? So I'm gonna be doing this one right here. Um, and there's a, there's a way to provide feedback here. Uh, where is it? I forget, it's one of these. I think you just put comments in here, right? So you have to log in, create a free account, but you can provide feedback, right? So that being said, let me jump into this one here. So this one is, is very helpful. Uh, I have a customer that's actually using it because um, they have two vCenters. One of them is the old vCenter, and, and then they have a new vCenter, and they need to move workloads from one to the other. But they don't want to tie them together in enhanced link mode because the old one's going to be going away, right? So, and, and it's just a handful of VMs. So we've supported cross vCenter vMotion since, I think, vSphere 6.0, uh, one of the updates. I forget which one. Um, but it was never something you could do through a user interface. It was only supported through the API. Right, so it was kind of a, a pain to do. Um, and had to and kind of, what's, the, what's the deal on EVC with this? Yeah, good question. So uh, same, same restraints that you would have with normal vMotion, right? So in fact, my customer has that problem because the old vCenter uh, and the old cluster is running on newer hardware and they're moving to older hardware. So it's the same problem, right? They don't have EVC mode turned on on the, the newer hardware which means they have to shut it down to move it. So same restrictions, but good question. So this is, so this is just uh, kind of a vSphere replication type utility. It's, it's not, it's, it's actually vMotion, right? It's, it's not doing like an HCX where it's replicating the data and then cutting over. It's, it's a full blown vMotion like you would traditionally okay. have with, you know, enhanced okay. link mode vCenters. Yep. Yep. Okay, so let me show you how it works. So I've got two vCenters here, VC01 and VC02. They are not connected in enhanced link mode, right? VC01 has this Photon VM running in it. And we can actually ping that here. So just to show you that this is happening live, let me do a, get the IP address. 138, okay, so we're pinging that guy, right? So the way it works is you go to the Fling site, you download this jar file. It's just a little Java application. And I actually have been running it on this SQL Server VM that I have in my lab that's kind of turned into a jump box. But if I log into that and go to downloads, I've already got it downloaded here. So here it is. If you go to instructions on the Fling, there's two different ways to run it. The first command here is going to push a plugin into vCenter which I'm gonna do in a little bit, but that will give you a little, a little GUI uh, plugin into vCenter and you can actually do all your vMotions that way. The other way is just to run it standalone, which is this one right here. If you don't care about 
changing the port because by default it's going to run on 8443. So if you don't care about that, just run this one here. Is this uh, 32 or 64 bit uh, Jerry? So requirements, um, I'm running 64 bit and it seems to be fine, but okay. good okay. question because <laughs> the actual version of JRE does matter. I was running JDK and I couldn't get it to connect and work. Right. right. And I actually read the documentation, believe it or not, and I changed it to JRE, I think. Uh, yeah. Som sometimes when you go to, go to the Java site, he automatically downloads 32, which is kind of a problem, but anyway. Yeah. So I think I'm running 8, JRE 8, and it's working fine. So what I'm going to do is just launch this. You guys see my screen okay? Yes. Okay. So one thing to note, the, the command that they have in here is for the XVM or cross vCenter vMotion 3.0. The latest version is 3.1, so you got to change that. Just be aware of that. So this is going to launch. And again, it's just going to start up a little web server and you can, uh, you can browse to that. Uh, I'm going to do it from my desktop rather than through this because I don't think I have Chrome running on this uh, virtual machine. So I'm going to browse to SQL 01 port 8443. And so here's what we get. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. All you got to do is click Migrate. And then here we can actually choose the migration we want. But first, we need to register for some vCenters, right? So I'm going to register my source. Oops. And then you can skip the certificate verification if you've got self-signed certs. Give that a second, and it should connect. Cool, so that worked. And now we're gonna register another one. We'll do the other vCenter. Oops. No. So once we have two vCenters linked here, we'll go back to the Migrate tab. And now you've got two options. You can either relocate, which is basically a vMotion, or you can actually clone it which is a nice option to have because if it's, um, if it's something you don't want to cut over right away or you want to have an easy failback, you know, that's a good option to have. If you click the advanced options here, it's just going to show you a couple more things like the, like the folder that you can put it in and things like that, right? So we're going to select our source. So we'll do the first vCenter because I think that's, yeah, that's where my Photon VM is running. And we're going to say, where do you want to, Send it to, or send it to the VCO2, uh, the source data center. And then here, this drop down is um, you can select multiple VMs. So I've clicked one, but it's still open because if I had a bunch of VMs, I could you know, select a bunch here. But I'm just going to do the one. And then where do you want to place it? So we're going to put it on that host in the secondary vCenter. Choose a data store. I've only got the one. And then here is your source network that's currently mapped, and here's where we want it to go to, right? So we click Submit. This is the task that's running, and we should see it right here within vCenter. And we're still pinging. Give that a couple seconds. It's just a small VM. And we should even see it on the other side but it's not powered on yet. Okay, so we've just cut over. It's now running on VCO2. I literally didn't drop a single ping because this is all nested anyway, so I would imagine it's pretty fast, right? And now it's not on one. So really quick and easy way to migrate from one VC to another without having to set up you know, a single PSC domain and have all that replicate and stuff like that. So it's pretty handy. Um, let me go back here real quick. Hey, Steve, quick question. Sure. I'm guessing it probably doesn't maintain any of the metadata. Uh, that's a good question. Let's do that. Let's see. So quickly create a tag here. 
let's call it use case, and that's fine. And we'll create a new tag. We'll call it TAM Lab. OK. And let's tag it. OK. So now it is tagged. So we'll move it back, and we'll see what happens. Um, let me close this. Just click uh, Control-C. It should stop. And I want to actually run the other command here. Where is it? So I'm going to do this one, because this is actually going to push that plugin into vCenter, which is actually pretty handy. So let's go back here. Um, I, let's see. OK, so. I got to put in some credentials here. Of course, that's my password. So it needs to know a user account in vCenter that it can actually install this plugin. So, okay. And then my FQDN. And of course, the jar file is 3.1, not 3.0. OK. So it's still going to start up the utility, but it's also going to push that plugin over to vCenter. So while I'm working on this, Joey, can you check the chat? Because I thought I saw somebody. Um, yeah, uh, Dean said, hey, the customer that used this last year, early last year, and uh, really happy with it, and kind of like did their own production of it. Um, and I agree, one of my customers used this early on, I think, with 5.5 to 6.0 or 6.5. I can't remember what the uh, latest they went to at the time. And, I don't uh, think 5.5 was supported because cross right. view motion was 6.0. Yeah, but they, they used this. I think they upgraded 5.5 to 6, and they went to 6.5. But they used it to get uh, like 700 VMs moved over. Oh, nice. Um, they didn't want to, you know, uh, do a links mode or anything like that. They just wanted to get rid of the the old stuff. So, yeah. Um, at the time, this utility wasn't there either, so it was all command line, which was not fun. But yeah, right. I'm glad to see that it's still advancing. So now, if I log into vCenter 02 and refresh the browser, I have this new uh, plugin here, cross vCenter migration, right? So it still depends on that Java application that's running on that SQL server, right? This is where it's running. So it's not like it's the, the service is embedded within vCenter right now, right? It's just still relying on that. But now we should be able to do a migration here. So let's migrate the source VCO2 in this data center. Click Next. We're going to choose Photon. And we're going to map it to, OK, so it's not authenticated. So let me add a vCenter. Oh, I see it. Here it is. I forgot to enter the password here. So let's do We have to add our credentials. OK, so now we're connected. Let's migrate some VMs from VCO2. This VM to VCO1. Sometimes it takes a sec for these to populate. There we go, to my only host, my only data store, same network. I'm going to skip all these. I'll do thin provision. Um, this is cool, though, because now you have the ability to rename it as well, right? If you just do percent %s, it'll keep the current name. Uh, but you can change that on the fly, which is cool. So now that's running. Let's go here. We can see the task running. We'll go to 01. We can see that it's receiving the VM. It 
Should take a second. And again, no ping drops. All right, so it's completed. It's running in VCO1. And no tags. Wah, wah. So it didn't, didn't carry over the metadata, right? So that's something you'd still have to account for, which is a, a good benefit of just connecting it to the same PSC domain because that's where all those tags and things live, right? Yeah, it's not a big deal. I was just curious. I mean, generally speaking, when, whenever you're talking about tags, you have to have the whole tagging methodology conversation when it comes to multiple vCenters. And, and you know, more, most of the time when you start doing that, it's a bigger discussion. So it's not a big deal. Yeah. No, it's a good question. So I'm glad we validated that. Um, so I'm going to wrap this one up and move on to the next. Anybody got any questions on this? But pretty cool utility. And the fact that they have a plugin for vCenter makes me think someday this may become productized, which I think would be really cool. But don't quote me on that. <laughs>